The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, welcome to Monday, February the 3rd, the day following one of the most boring Super Bowls we've had in a long time. The only good part of it was I had three and eight in the pool, <laughs> so I, I won a few, a few bucks, not much, but uh, the fact that I had the exact score was just totally amazing. So it was, uh, that part was a little bit fun. We, uh, the first chart that I posted in here, uh, for Tiger TV today is the NASDAQ. This is the one we've been watching for the past week or so. And, um, you know, we have a time and price squaring up uh, tomorrow. Uh, could come as early as today. We had the new moon occur on the 31st. I would like to mention that uh, on, the, uh, on the new moons, that of the 10 worst days that we've ever had in the stock market, uh, they have all occur occurred between one and four days of a new moon, and uh, that is a uh, the reason why it's four days is because it's usually over a weekend. So we had that new moon on the 31st. I don't know if this is going to be a crash, but folks, if we get that Dow Jones down more than 350 today, we could have one one heck of a day to the downside somewhere between seven and 800 points in the Dow in one day. We're going to see 800 points sometime between now and you know the probably March or early April because of the volatility starting to increase so much. So that's the, the main thing that we're, we're keeping an eye on. Um, if you listen to Basil talk about the volatility, you know, we've, we've uh, gone above 18 now. So that tells us that we have a, a chance to, uh, you know, head out uh, above the 20 level. And of course, above the 20 level in the VIX, you know, you're looking at 39 uh, area, and that's only that's not even a 382 retracement of the high from 2009. But we are very oversold right now, um, and we have completed some some interesting patterns in the S and P, uh, along with uh, you know some of the other things that we that we look at. I wanted to show you the uh, the next one I wanted to show was the the, the three drive pattern that we have happening. Uh, right now in the in the Dow Jones looking at the hourly chart we've gone that we've gone below the 1.618 of the last move uh, we've we, we've hit actually hit the 127 off of the October low so this is an area where we should be coming into uh, some really good support here in the Dow Jones down here at this uh, 15,400 level uh, that's equivalent in the S&P to around 17. Um, my number in the S&P was 1750, and we've got down to 1746 uh, so far today. But we could easily, you know, if it gets much lower, we could easily see 1710 uh, in the S&P. But we are coming into a really strong uh, cycle date tomorrow. We've mentioned this several times. That's part of the of the Bradley model that we look at. That has been. Um, you know, holding up uh, relatively well since January, so we'll have to see if this is going to be uh, going to be the case uh, uh, of whether it's going to turn from this level uh, or not. That's the uh, you know the bottom line of what we're watching. Uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, folks, uh, with a, a subject that uh, is very dear to my heart, and that is uh, the use of margin in your trading and stuff like that. So if you're going to uh, hold on with me until I get the chart. Uh, ready, and then I will get this. Uh, I will be able to pull it up and take a look at it here, and you'll be able to see it. This came from uh, one of the uh, one of our subscribers from TFNN forwarded to me over the weekend, and it shows margin debt and the net credit balance. And margin debt is how much people are using when they're borrowing money to to buy stock. And as you can see, this is as high as level as we've had. Uh, in uh, since uh, uh, 1980, but you can even go back to 1929, and it's bigger than that. But there wasn't, um, you know, in 1929, there were a lot of bucket shops, uh, very similar to the pink sheets and the stuff like you saw on the Wolf of Wall Street and things like that that were going on. Not that they still don't go on, but there were a lot of those at that time. But the main thing here is this uh, pattern that we're seeing uh, in margin debt is very similar to the pattern that we've seen in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. 
it's the same pattern that we've seen in, of course, the S&P and, of course, the NASDAQ has went back and touched the highs, almost touched the highs that we made in 2000. And that's primarily because of some of these huge stocks that are in there like Amazon and Google and, uh, and some of the others. And, and speaking of Google, I wanted to uh, bring up a chart of Google because of what happened uh, Friday. You know, Google had its, uh, you talk about volatility, but you're going to see some really wild stuff here. Uh, Google on Friday, the earnings came out. And they originally the stock was down fifty dollars. Now fifty dollars and eleven hundred dollar stock is only four percent, so it's not very much. But from there it rallied ten percent. It was down fifty and then went up to be up about eighty. So it rallied over a hundred dollars per share, which is roughly nine percent in a matter of uh, a few hours. What's interesting about this is that the pattern that it's completing here is a reverse point wave pattern, also known as the expanding triangle that Gardley talked about on his book. It was known as the, the, T6, pan, the T6 pattern. He, he uh, uh, labeled all of his triangles uh, T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this, of course, is the most bearish of all the patterns that, uh, that are in the book because it's a, it is a reversal pattern. Now, the thing is, if Google gets about 1,200, this would certainly be a failure. But if, in fact, it does continue to go down, this could be a really big move. Um, in the downside in Google, it could easily drop 25 or 30 percent and still be incredibly bullish. So this is a pattern that has, uh, has occurred in Google. And uh, I put this into the newsletter this week because it was so interesting you know, to look at it. And also, I, I put the daily chart of Google into that also so that they could uh, – uh, you know, you could see what it looked like uh, on a bo on a on the same basis. But um, the main thing that that we're looking at this week is this uh, tomorrow is uh, you know the fourth, which is the Bradley date. Um, that is, it's it's a pretty key date because between the fourth and tenth, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's happening. But if we break below, if we get more the down down more than 350 points today, folks, we could easily see a uh, meltdown, and that would take the S&P down to around 1710. And uh, and if that happens, then we'll see. But we should get a, we should get a rally somewhere in here. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to pick a bottom in here, of course, because I think we're looking at uh, you know we're looking at uh, you know prices to uh, to go down a, a whole lot a whole lot lower than uh, where we are now. Uh, one of our uh, subscribers uh, for the for the Tigers Den has asked to take a look at Amazon, and that was another stock that I had looked at uh, over the weekend. And uh, you'll talk about a stock that has had some type of a nice reversal. I'll uh, I'll bring the chart up. It made a beautiful butterfly pattern up at the top, and uh, since that time, uh, it is uh, really getting uh, whacked pretty hard. It's uh, down 347, and just a few days ago, it was trading at 410. So the folks that bought that are in trouble. This is where the margin debt is going to. Uh, cause the problems, folks. The reason why it's different this time is because the margin debt is so much greater. It's not going to be on a day, uh, you know, when the Dow's only down 250. It's going to be on a day when the Dow's down a thousand or more. And believe me, a thousand from this area is nothing. If you would have considered what happened in 1987, the Dow dropped 16 percent in one day. So you can imagine what 16 percent of this would be. The Dow would be down 2,500 points in one day. Now you don't want to think about that, but that's what we were faced with in 1987 and it was uh, uh, the day from hell as far as I was concerned and I was on the I was on the right side of the market I was short the uh, S&P I had some put some puts on the OEX and then I was also long some bonds but the problem was that I wasn't sure that the exchanges were going to still be in business by the time uh, you know at, at the close of business the next day uh, but in for fortunately the plunge protection team came in and made everything, uh, you know, uh, go away, and that made it, uh, you know, very, very easy to uh, to get through it. Now we've got a um, a line that you can call in. It's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you need to have a call, uh, call in and ask a question if you'd like. But we're having some really good volatility uh, across the board, and everything which we were expecting to have happen. I would like to show you the volatility index uh, live because. Um, we, uh, we, we have an area where we're right up against this long term. We're hitting 20 now, which is what Basil said we would be doing uh, today. And we're almost there uh, as we speak up to the 786 level. And uh, we'll have a uh, situation here. If I can just get the chart to work. 
and I'll be all right. And you'll see that uh, the the VIX has uh, is up uh, quite a bit to the uh, or almost to the uh, twenty point seventy, which is the touching that downtrend line that's been in effect since last January. The important thing to remember, folks, is is that the uh, the market is down in January. When we have a down January, that is a very bad thing, especially after all these patterns that we've had that have completed now. There's no question in my mind that we've not completed the major top up here in the Dow Jones and the transportations and all these others that we've been looking at. The, they've been rolling over. Uh, I saw an interest, interesting statistic uh, on uh, Saturday uh, on Bloomberg that uh, there are more than 58% uh, of the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange are below their 200-day moving averages, which means that's how they define the uh, their their way of defining a downtrend. And so you have that many stocks that are going to the downside. That's a uh, pretty significant uh, thing to be uh, looking at. So uh, we've definitely made some type of a, a move to, to the downside. And uh, the question is, is how much lower we're going to go? We got a caller from Kay in Denver, Colorado, and you have my condolences, young lady, because I was certainly <laughs> rooting for your team. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty sad here, but uh, I, yeah, I know. We'll, we'll we'll recover and move on. This is true. I, I will tell you this: when when Peyton fumbled the ball the last time, and the score I had was three and eight, I needed uh, I needed Seattle to get the ball because I knew the game was over. But when he fumbled, I just said, "Oh, thank God!" Because I knew they would run out the clock and I would win the the little football pool that I was in. So it was. Uh, and it's the first time that that's happened in a you know a millennium. But uh, anyway, it was very sad because I'm a big fan of Denver. What can I do for you? You want you have a question about IBB? Yes. Where do you see uh, where do you see that going to? Okay. Uh, to? Just a second here. Let me get this. I'll uh, pull the chart up here. I know I've got it because someone has asked me about this before. That's the biotech index, as I recall. Correct. Yes. I remember we made a big uh, pattern up there recently. Well, this isn't down very much at all. This is uh, this is actually uh, holding up. As a matter of fact, uh, you should be able to uh, hold on. I, I can see a nice little Gartley here that you should be able to. Um, um, yeah, we should be able to see this Gartley. Just give me one second. I'm trying to get uh, get it lined up so I can see the whole chart. But we've got a, a nice Gartley forming here, and uh, we haven't even taken out last week's lows yet. This thing is uh, this thing is a lot more bullish than the rest of the market for sure. But we could go to 228. Just uh, it's ready to come in there now. Just hold on a second, Kay, and I'll I'll put this in. But we we have a Gartley forming uh, in the the IBB at 228. That would be the low coming off of the middle of December. Stay with me, Kay, would you please? We've got the Dow down a couple hundred points. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the trade charts today by visiting tfnn.com with over three decades of trading experience andy hecht brings a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise to each weekly issue of his newsletter the technomental commodity report the technomental commodity report gives you andy's unique technomental analysis of the commodities market a combination of technicals and fundamental analysis, which he has developed and perfected over his many years of trading. The Technomental Commodity Report is only $49 a month, and right now you can get a full month-long trial subscription while paying absolutely nothing. See for yourself the kind of weekly report Andy delivers to his subscribers every Thursday morning. You'll receive specific stock, ETF, and option trades based on Andy's analysis, so no futures account is required. For all the details and to start your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, visit TFNN.com today. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, and uh, we have Kay from Denver. Kay, are you still on the line? I am. Okay, we were looking at the IBB, the biotech index, and it does look, uh, it's by far the strongest thing. You know, it hasn't even taken out last week's lows as of yet, but there is a Gartley down there at the 228 level. If we go below that, it's going to be uh, rather nasty. But what I've done is, uh, if you get a chance, Kay, go into Tiger, a T TV and take a look at the archive of the show today and I posted a chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index going back uh, about eight years and you'll see all the patterns that are completing up here and this is the problem that I see in the markets uh, when you add these patterns together along with this uh, gigantic increase in margin debt where people are borrowing money and they have very low credit balances to begin with and then and on top of that, you have the bullish consensus, you know, as bullish as it can be. And you've had a divergence in the market where there's more stocks going down than stocks that are going up. These are very, very nasty things that could happen. So uh, just be sure that you protect your portfolio. It may pick a point. Uh, I believe Basil's point uh, was today, I believe, right around uh, 15,500, as I recall. Um, pretty close to where it is now that if we close below there at least protect yourself so that you uh, will not uh, you know damage uh, you know your family or your portfolio or anything like I'm, that so be sure you protect I'm yourself I'm actually short it oh okay well this is good you know I, 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 I particularly I like the short side point. especially when it comes off very very quickly like this but uh, we will get a bounce in here and this bounce is going okay. to be the one that is going to be the um, the telling of where we're going to be on our next leg because we've been down really sharply for about 10 days now and uh, once we do get the bounce and uh, with the volatility the way it is you know this bounce could really be um, you know quite large and that's the one you want to be able to try to uh, pinpoint a place to uh, you know to put, add some more shorts okay great yeah I was the one that called in that day where those guys were all giving you such a hard time, and, and I totally believe that we were going <laughs> been, down. And <laughs> was that's, just, that's not a problem. I was a hey, that's been going on for seven years. It starts with Tom O'Brien. No, no, Tom's the greatest guy. I'm but, a big, no, I have to take I'm that. I'm a big Tom fan, too. 
Well, I have to take that heat because, you know, when you're wrong, you know, like Peyton Manning, I, uh, I have my, my brother-in-law knows him pretty well because, you know, he's from Indiana and they, they uh, practice right near where my uh, brother-in-law and my sister live and they take the kids over there and watch the Colts practice when he was there. So they got to know him and he's, uh, he's a really a super nice guy with a great personality and no ego at all. So I know, uh, you know, he's apologizing to all of his teammates and stuff and, you know, that just happens, you know, you're sometimes you're right, sometimes Sometimes you're wrong. There's nobody that does everything right except God, and she doesn't trade or play football. So what are you going to do? Uh, well, thank you so much. This hey, thank you for calling in, and thanks for the kind words. And next year we'll be at the Super Bowl watching Peyton play again, I'm sure. Well, let's hope so. You bet. Thanks for calling right, in, thank Kay. You. And uh, I'm. Uh, oh, by the way, I will be speaking in Denver uh, for the oh. Denver Trading Group on March the first. If you contact those folks, uh, I think it's a small charge uh, for the Denver Trading Group. I'll be giving a, uh, a talk uh, in Denver on uh, December the first. Uh, it's a it's a like a market technicians association of. Uh, of Denver. So anyway, that's what we're uh, that's what we're taking a look at. We got the Dow down uh, only 220 now. We've come back from being down 250. Uh, like I say, if we get it down more than 350 in the Dow, then we'd be looking at something a lot more sinister. Uh, we're not seeing uh, a great deal of activity, um, you know, in some of the other markets. Well, gold's up 20 dollars after being uh, down unchanged uh, overnight, and then it had a little bit of a flight to quality. Uh, you know, we've got copper down, and we've got uh, treasury bonds are up uh, another point. We're getting really close. We're only four points away now, folks, for our sell area in treasury bonds. We're looking to sell those March bonds if we can get them up to that 138 level because interest rates uh, are going higher. And you're starting to see that uh, in the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is getting very, very strong, and the only way you're going to get a strong currency is if you have good interest rates and uh, our interest rates are going to be going higher and people are starting to anticipate that and so I believe they're buying the dollar to uh, you know to help uh, offset uh, you know their investments and whatever they want to call the flight to quality or, or whatever it is so just remember folks that this uh, is long-term weekly chart and this New York Stock Exchange index is a uh, it's a it's a game changer. So you know if you got to you got to pick a spot to find out where you call uncle if you're still long, whether you use a trailing stop of uh, you know whatever you're looking at. We got the Dow down about 218 points now, and gold down uh, 20 up 20. Excuse me. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades 
open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and uh, we are uh, getting ready to talk a little bit about the uh, emerging market stuff. I wanted to post in there the... Uh, emerging markets because uh, we've had a Gartley pattern that is failing now. Uh, it's breaking badly. Um, the Dow Jones is only 5% off of its high and it was up 26% you know for last year and uh, you know they're blaming all of this on the emerging markets and, and some other whatever they want to blame it on but it's just an, I believe it's just a fact that these you know, this margin debt is what the real problem is. I mean, no one really talks about that. Wall Street doesn't talk about it because they don't want people to pull their margin back because they don't trade as much. And that's the you know that's what the nature of the game is. When I worked at Drexel Burnham and Bear, I, I tell you that that was a great firm to work with. Uh, I started uh, two years after Milken did. He started there in '74, and I started in '76. And when I first met with the directors of uh, Drexel, um, you know, to uh, to work for them. Uh, they, they told me a very simple story. He said, folks are really used to losing money in the stock market, and folks are really used to making money in the stock market. What folks don't like to do is to lose all their money in the stock market. And he says, if you can prevent them from losing all their money in the stock market, and he was referring to commodity markets for me, but he says, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be okay, and I've always tried to do that. Any time I had an you know an account that would uh, you know be down more than twenty percent, you know I would close that account. There were to protect yourself somewhere along the way. I mean Steve Rhodes talks about it, Tom talks about it, um, Basil talks about it. I I probably preach too much about it, but you know there's not uh, there's not too much uh, that I can uh, that I believe in that much is the is the mounting control and risk. Oh by the way. Um, um, my good friend Jack O'Callaghan, who was on the uh, gold medal team for the Olympics in 1980, uh, he, uh, his, uh, his father passed away Friday. He was supposed to be here uh, in Arizona to visit me uh, next week, but he's not going to be able to do that because uh, his dad passed away. And then, uh, anyway, say some prayers for Mr. Jack because uh, 
his father was a, a really nice fellow. Anyway, um, back to business here. Um, the, the emerging markets are just, um, they have no way of pulling us out of anything, whether it's China or any other market. If you want to take a look, they always talk about China causing all this. Folks, China has been going down for so long. I mean, it's been going down, it's been going down since Hector was a pup. And that's been uh, that's been a long time ago. I'll put the Chinese market into Tiger TV so you can take a look at it. But it's been going down for uh, you know well over five years, and we've had lower highs. We've had some beautiful ABCD patterns, you know, uh, forming, and we have uh, you know the Chinese New Year started on the 31st. It's the year of the horse, and they are going to have a. Uh, you know, a, a pretty much week-long celebration in China. I don't believe any of their markets are going to be open until at least Wednesday at the probably the very earliest the futures might open. But that's the, you know, that's the bottom line of what we're looking at here. These markets have been incredibly bearish. Now, if, if I'm wrong here and this is just going to be a normal 5% correction and markets are going to go up and make a new high, then, you know, my hats are off to it. But I really think we've made some type of a major major top in here looking at these uh, at these patterns that we've been following uh, and the New York Stock Exchange index never really violated anything it went up and matched the high from 2007 and completed all you know we had six major patterns when that uh, New York Stock Exchange index was uh, topping on the new moon of uh, December 31st and so uh, you know this is what we're this is what we're watching. We have a key Bradley date coming in tomorrow the fourth, so I'm expecting uh with the market being down uh you know this many days in a row, uh with a five percent correction, we should have some buying probably come in around Tuesday and we'll get a little bit of a bounce and then we'll maybe have three or four days of a bounce and then right after the tenth of February, folks, uh put your parachute on because uh if it starts down after the tenth of February after just a short rally, uh, we're going to be down probably really sharply uh, into uh, March 21st, which is the uh, the first day of spring, the spring equinox, and uh, there is a huge number of cycles that are present uh, that we look at from the astro basis, and I wanted to uh, show you these because these are very similar to what 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 occurred when we were in uh, March uh, of '09, so we want to watch that uh, very, very closely. If by chance the market were going to be rallying and making new highs up into March 21st, uh, then uh, that, would be, uh, that would be a major high. But with the damage we've done so far, and we've done some damage, there's no question about it, you take a, take a look at the price of uh, Amazon and take a look at the price of Apple and the charts of the Apple and the charts of Amazon. You, you explain to me how those are going to be bullish. Hello, give me a break. You know this is not going to happen. This is a uh, this is a situation we've damaged some of these stocks. You know really really badly, and they're just patterns. I don't know anything about the fundamentals. I'm, I don't think anybody else does either, really. But um, the charts are telling you what it is. Somebody knew something was wrong with Amazon. You know two days before the uh, you know the big breaks, and uh, you know we'll see. You know Google's still holding up okay, but. Apple has, uh, you know, that, that stock is broken down from 700, made an ABCD up, and, you know, these markets, they look very, very bearish. You've got to, uh, so just go, go take a look at your charts and see where they were and see where they are. If they're making lower tops, uh, they're in a downtrend. If they're making lower bottoms, they're in a downtrend. And that's, uh, you know, that's the, the basis of, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is to see that you don't get hurt too badly on some of these things and try to pick up uh, a few pebbles along the way because there's, al there's always going to be some really good uh, buying opportunities. We've got a, a call from uh, New Jersey. Uh, Rob, are you there? Yeah, hi, Larry. How are you doing? I'm good. What can I do for you? I had a question. If you're in cash, you're not short or long, and you're waiting to go short, yes. what level of the S&P 500 would you be looking for? Uh, 2015 around December. <laughs> no, I, no, I think I think we're going to see it at least at least at 1500, maybe 1450. That's the minimum that I'm looking at, and then maybe even uh, could could be even lower. This what I what I really think we, we're seeing here, uh, Rob, is I think we're seeing a, a game changer with this long term pattern that we've had happen. 
uh, in these uh, in these markets. And and the other thing is is that they've happened in all the markets in the world. It's happening in Spain. Okay. We're, we're seeing Gartley patterns in Spain. We're seeing three drive patterns in in uh, Germany, uh, France, London. But for the S and P five hundred, like if you're waiting to go short, like yes. you're looking for a pullback. What, sure. How high do you think the pullback will go? Well, let, let's just let's just take let's just take a quick look at it. Let's just look at the cash here for a second because we'll use that. That's a good you know a barometer of what people look at. It. We'll just pull this up, and what we'll do is we'll just look at it on the hourly basis here, and you'll see here what we'll be watching. And so far like we we've we've come we've come from eight uh, eight one eighty five to one seventy five. So we've we've dropped ten points. Correct. Yes. So 61% of uh, 10 points takes you, uh, just add 6 points, so you'd be looking around 181. Uh, that would be the 61% retracement of the uh, S&P in the cash. So you'd be looking at roughly about a 65-point move in the futures to the upside. So uh, look at the cash if you get it up. Or in fact, there's a gap there at the 180.50 level. So watch that one really closely. There's a a really um, significant gap at the 180.50 level that was left on the um, on January 23rd. So uh, okay. watch that one really closely too. And you think it might there might be a little bear rally for a couple of days oh, or a couple oh, of weeks? Well, let me or... let, let me Bob, Rob. Let me explain something to you. <laughs> and I can I can tell you this firsthand. When this thing starts to rally, the one thing that the bears will remember is how many times it's rallied and how many times it's spanked them pretty badly. Do you know what I mean? So they will okay. remember that. So you you will get your chance to sell it, I believe, up into the 180.50 level uh, in the cash S and P. You know that's the main thing. Uh, you know that's the main thing I think that we're looking at. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks for calling okay. in, Rob. I hope that Have helped. Uh, it helps a lot. Thank you. Okay, fine. We had a couple of uh, text uh, messages from uh, folks. Um, uh, someone asked if the cattle market is topped, and I, I really believe that it has because uh, we covered this on the um, commodity show last Thursday, but we had a cattle report. The cattle inventory report came out uh, this past uh, Friday, and it uh, we have the lowest herd we've had since 1951. Now realize cattle have been going straight up for weeks and weeks, and we've had this tremendously bullish report. So what do you think cattle are doing today? They're going lower. See, the news is already out. So the news was following the trend, and so uh, you know this is it's history. I believe the cattle have made a you know pretty significant top in here. I don't trade the darn things, but uh, they uh, they certainly look like they've made a top with that three dry pattern that's been uh, <laughs> that it's been in that. Uh, uh, position for for quite some time, so we'll see um, if that uh, if that's going to happen or not. The other question is, how does someone determine whether you're oversold uh, or overbought? <laughs> that, that's really simple. If you're oversold, you're bullish, and if you're overbought, you're short. So that's pretty much how I figure it. There's really, uh, you know, th th you you can use all the oscillators in the world. That, that you want to use. All I look at is the the 1.618 expansion. If you get a 1.61 expansion on the upside, you're overbought. And if you get a 1.618 uh, expansion on the downside, you're oversold. And that's what we have going on, you know, in the stock market today. Whether it's going to be today or tomorrow, I do think we'll we'll see a little bounce, like we were mentioning with Rob in the uh, uh, from New Jersey about the. Uh, S and P, we should rally up into that gap area at around 180.50. That's about a 40 or 50 point rally in the S and P. And considering we were down 10 Friday and 25 today, that just gets us back into next week's range. You know, so that's uh, that's all. That's really uh, all the uh, all the thing you could do. But the uh, someone asked a question about cattle and how 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 will that affect our eating habits? Well. You know, cattle have been going up for quite a while and hasn't affected our eating habits uh, too much now. What you're seeing in the restaurants is is they're serving a 12-ounce filet, but when they give it to you, it's only 10 ounces. That's how they keep the price the same. You know, you don't have to be a rocket science to figure that out. When you go in, you're seeing that the, uh, 
you know, that the, they shave back the, uh, the quantity a little bit, and no one sits there with a scale and weighs it, at least no one that I know. I'm sure some com- consumer protection people are doing that, but that's not the, uh, that's not the way the thing really, uh, really works, but we'll, we'll know about that. The, um, uh, someone asked a question about the yen dollar relationship. Uh, uh, I posted that earlier uh, with the Nikkei, and we've definitely made a major top in the Nikkei. We've been talking about that when it hit 16,000, and um, they they're down a little bit last night, a few hundred points. And uh, so, you know, this is all part of the cycles that we're looking at, folks. I I don't know what's going to happen next, but the good part is nobody else does either. We're just going to have to see you know uh what's occurred we have had a good rally in um in gold today we rallied back up to that uh, 1260 level which is pretty strong resistance and uh you know we're having some um a little bit of rally uh, uh re- relief rallies in the grains a little bit which we mentioned on last thursday but uh that's just the beginning of a little bounce is all i can see as far as that the one thing that the fed is worried about in my opinion and that is deflation because you saw what's happened to our grain markets. You saw what happened to copper. You saw what happened to uh, some of these other things. And, you know, they've been in tremendous bear markets for a long time. And those are deflationary things. And now you've got, you know, people that are out of work that have just stopped even trying to find work. And even they're raising the minimum wage to $10, and yet people still don't pay the minimum wage. So that's the main thing, uh, you know. That, that 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 you're watching when you're when you're looking at some of these economic things. That's the one thing about being a technician is you don't have to listen to any of this stuff. Just look at the prices. If prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. Take cattle for example. For example, five weeks ago they made a pretty significant bottom and they were up for five straight weeks. Then the bullish report comes out and you know then it turns around and goes down. If you remember Thursday, those of you that were listening to us, we, we looked at natural gas. The fact that natural gas had this 25% move in about uh, 11 trading days. And what happened was it was all short covering. And look what's happened to natural gas since that time. It's retraced almost uh, two-thirds of that move in just a matter of uh, a little bit of time. So you got to remember the old adage that they told us at the old Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and that is you got to buy them when they're crying and sell them when they're yelling. And that means you've got to be able to stand in there and take a little bit of heat when you're trying to get out of your position and then when you do finally get to the spot where you want to, uh, you know, buy something, then you're going to be able to, uh, you know, be farther off. We've got the Dow only down 200 now, folks. We're rallying back. It might be unchanged on the day. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin, here on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're back, and we have a caller from Wisconsin. Uh, Chris, are you there? Yes. Hi, Larry. How are you? What can I do for you, my friend? Uh, well, you were talking about uh, looking for a, uh, a bounce uh, to potentially go short on some of the major indexes. And uh, I'm just uh, taking a look at uh, IWM against the S&P or the Dow. IWM seems to have a, a stronger pattern down right now. Does that mean that it potentially would bounce harder? Uh, you know, I don't look at that, Russell, but if you give me a second, I've looked at it in the past because, you know, everybody in the whole world was buying it. So give me one second sure. to uh, a, to look at it. Oh, wow, it's got, uh, yeah, it's breaking down a lot harder than the uh, than the rest of the market. But still, you know, we're, um, well, it, yeah, it's a lot worse. See, we're almost at the 61%, re wow, I think we've made it. Just a second. Yeah, we're almost at the 61% retracement of the uh, move from October and that October low once we go below that October low you can turn the lights out because <laughs> we'll be in a major bear market but at 108.35 you've got a 61 percent retracement uh, in the Russell coming off of that October low uh, and boy believe me that number in the S&P is 50 points lower that would be 17.10 in the uh, S&P future so the uh, Russell right now is uh, much weaker but but frankly, Chris, you know this thing is—it's not the—it's not as popular as the um, what we have in the uh, uh, S&P and even the Dow Jones. You know some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, so I, I don't—I've never traded the Russell. I've charted it. I've looked at it, but I've never—I've uh, never even traded it at all. So I don't know, uh, you know, anything about it. Well, um, so my question would be, if something is trading down hard like the Russell compared to uh, the SPY, uh, when it does have this little, is that considered a dead cat bounce where it bounces up before the drop? That's just, this is what you should do. You should sell the weakest things, 
and buy the strongest thing. So if you're willing to, if you if you want to sell something, sell the weakest thing. So uh, the main thing you'd want to be doing would be to sell the weakest thing. So watch the Russell, and if it does uh, just get a little bit of a 382 bounce or something like that, uh, when the S&P is rallying more, then that's when you want to go into it and uh, take your, uh, you know, take your shot at. Uh, uh, you know, from the short side, that's what I would do. So you know, would, that, listen, be, you, would that be at about the 110.54 level uh, based yeah. on this most recent move on the 60-minute IW? That's, cor- that's correct. That's exactly what you'd be looking at. That You'd be looking at about one around 110.54 to 111 is what you'd be watching as a potential bounce. Okay. And, and all, uh, the, all so that's going to get you into next week's range is what it'll do, uh, last week's range. Okay. And so, once again, you're saying uh, with the S&P being stronger, when we if we see the um, the uh, S&P bounce higher uh, into that one one six one eight, uh, that would be when we look at the uh, IWM and see indeed if it's at that three eight two, um, we're potentially in the right area. I would, that's exactly what I would do. Correct. Just make make sure that you don't. If you buy something or sell something, that you always use a stop because sure. we're starting to see volatility. You can see what's happened to the VIX today, and uh, you know the fact that that the market has gone a lot lower and the VIX has not gone up, uh, you know, uh, any higher, is a sign that maybe there is you know some buying. Uh, you know, find a bottom in here either today or tomorrow but uh, you know this market's going lower that in my opinion it's already it's uh, blowing whistles and, and and flying flags to tell you that it wants to go <laughs> lower it's just a question of when it's a margin debt that's the problem Chris is, is people sure. have been borrowing listen thanks for calling in my friend I live every yes. day in an attitude of gratitude and God bless Hold to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion.